Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Now, I wanted to pop in while I'm working out. And as I done told you, I got to give you videos when I can get it to you. And this one thing that I want you to think about is when you're getting ready to take that step, you got to think outside the box. Nothing is off limits. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. I got on, I went on Oprah in 2009. It's 2022. I'm still going. People think Oprah changed your life. Yeah, if she's stamping you, but Oprah didn't stamp me. She didn't promote my book. I made zero dollars. I went on there to tell my story of being a toxic, controlling, boyfriend in college or uh, incident that I had with my ex-girlfriend in the dorm room that got physical. Now, there was no police and black eyes and bust lips and punching and all of that. But it got physical, pushing, shoving, slanging, wrestling, you know, found out I found out about some cheating, about an STD, and things got out of hand. I could have swept it under the rug. I could have hid it, didn't have to tell nobody. She didn't tell nobody. Didn't have to do any of that. But what I did, I turned that pain into purpose, that mistake into a lesson. I was 19 years old probably when it happened. It's not foreign. Everybody, almost everybody go through it. Almost everybody have been in a relationship that get toxic, that get out of hand. So I could have just kept it as such, but I say, you know what? This is not what should be in relationships. And I still had to make more mistakes. Still in my marriage today, still learning about love. Still learning about myself as a man, about my wife as a woman. Still learning. And as I learn, I'm gonna teach. But let me tell you, the way I got on Oprah, and then the way I got on Tyra Banks, and the way I got on the 700 Club is I Googled them, and I Googled Oprah Winfrey Show. I'm gonna tell you a secret. I had never watched Oprah. I knew who she was, but I had never watched her. I was in my 20s. That's not her demographic. 20 something year old black man. I had never watched a single episode, but I knew her stage was the biggest stage in the world. So what I did, I Googled Oprah Winfrey Show, the website came up. When I went to Oprah.com, I'm clicking around, there was a little button that said, tell us your story. And I went in there every day and told a portion of my story, a version of my story. They had a 2,500 character limit. So if a word is four letters, now you got 2,496 characters left. And sometimes I fill up that whole 2,500. Sometimes I write just a catchy, poetic, uh, right to the point paragraph or two. It took two years before Oprah producer called me and said, hey, we got your story. Chris Brown and Rihanna just happened. We are looking for people, men and women, who have gone through what Chris Brown and Rihanna have gone through to tell their story. It'll be live. It's live. See, if you rec they had to do it quick. And if you record something like that, if I tell my story, and then I change my mind and I say, listen, I don't want to be on there. Take me off of there. Now I mess up the show. They did it live. 
and it had a little delay. Networks have a little delay in case a curse word is said, in case something is said they got to cut out. I got the call. I had already been talking to Tyra Banks' producer. So after I went on Oprah, I went on Oprah, it was me and my wife. I had been married at this point for two years. I had written two books. The story I was telling was from five, six years ago. I had wrote about it in my first book, What Daddy Never Told His Little Girl. That was the title of the book, long title, I know. What Daddy Never Told His Little Girl. It's still for sale on Amazon. I had wrote about it slightly in there. That was the realest, rawest book I ever wrote because I was fresh out the streets from selling drugs. I, even after I published the book, I went back to selling drugs. Real hood, real basic, just straight, no chaser. And I just raw truth in that book. I watered myself down after that because we can't handle the truth. As y'all see with the brother that just passed away, his truth offended a lot of people. We can't handle another human being truth. If you tell me all your truth, I ain't gonna like you. They're just human, just how we are. Just how we are. So here go the book, boom. I go on open, sit down. They got me and my wife in the front row. They fly us in, they put us in the Omni Hotel in Chicago. They pick us up in a limo, a real limo. Drive us to the studio. We in there, I go on, we sitting in the front row, another man telling his story. After he tell his story for a couple minutes, it's my turn. They bring me up on the stage with Oprah. I'm up there on the stage with Oprah. She asked me questions, I can't remember. They show a little intro. They had me read, the day before, they had me read the email I sent in. I was a poet, so I exaggerated on the email. And they made me read that. So here I am lying, stretching the truth, making myself look like a monster. And they used that because it was good for TV. It was sensational. And that's what I get for wanting to get out here so bad. Wanted to help so bad, made me look like a monster. And when it wasn't a single punch thrown, wasn't even a slap thrown, it was more so grab. All this here, you, you know, you probably have been through what you might have been through worse. You might have done worse, depending on who watching this. And so, but I wanted a platform to help. So I had to expose myself. So here I am, I go to expose myself, I pay a price. If you want the limelight, understand that it will shine on your flaws too. You cannot have the limelight without being exposed. You're going to be exposed. So what I did is I took a lesson from Eminem, the rapper, in the movie Eight Mile. And I exposed myself in the battle rap so that the devil couldn't expose me. See, a lot of influencers come out like a knight in shining armor, like they perfect. Like they ain't never did nothing shady, nothing dirty, nothing they shame of. And they come out with all this advice. And they build all this whole tribe and they do all of this and then boom, at their height they get exposed. The Lord gave me the wisdom expose yourself so now the devil can't do nothing with you because everything you done did you teaching from it so you letting people know yes I was toxic, controlling and abusive yes I was a, a liar, deceiver a drug dealer a thief, criminal yes I was all of that and God is still working on me to this day and so I did that now see, listen, when I went on Oprah, it was March 19th, 2009. I had just turned 25 years old. 
on March 8th. I had no manager. I had no agent. I had no publicist. I had no intern. I had no assistant. I had no team. I worked alone when I got on over. And when I was in the limo, headed back to the hotel after the show, they took, I took an email, Tower Banks producer. It was a young white guy. And I said, hey, did you see me on Oprah? Because Tyra used to copy everything Oprah do. He said, yeah, I seen you, and you were amazing. He said, we want to bring you in. He said, we want to bring you on the Tyra show as a guest expert. See, on Oprah, I was a featured guest. They didn't even put Tony Gaskins. They just put Tony so that I could get no benefit from it, so I could get no followers on social media, so that I could make no money because they was having the story of a former abuser. Now, it was other men on there who they, it was, their abuse was work way worse. It, it was like, one guy was on there with his wife and he started choking out two weeks after she married him. He was a, pretending to be an angel. She married him two weeks later he beating her to a pulp. Mine was different because it was in college. I was 19. It was circumstance, but I didn't even tell the circumstance on there. I didn't say I walked in the room with her talking to her ex-boyfriend. And she had an contracted a disease and was sleeping with me unprotected and didn't tell me. I didn't tell the circumstance that led up to the blow up. I just told my side of it. Never said her name. Not in the book. Not on this video. Never said her name. I exposed myself. And I think because of that, she never felt the need. Well, she would, well, after my brand started to blow up, she would pop up in the comments, he's a fake. He's a fraud. And she didn't even know me. She didn't even know me no more. That it was it was 12 years later. She still was saying stuff, and it just what people's spirit be. And so, uh-oh.